All right. Uh, the other side of the fundamental theorem of algebra, which involves uh, building polynomials rather than uh, breaking them apart. So uh, this is normally a place where I would talk about the complex conjugate root theorem, um, but uh, we don't have time to do that this year. Uh, we have mentioned the irrational root theorem before that said if uh, a plus b times the square root of c is one root, then a minus b times the square root of c is also a root. So on the note page that you have, you probably have to make uh, some accommodations here. Um, in particular, I've got some things showing up on here that uh, shouldn't be on there, so I'm going to make up some uh, new zeros here. Uh, let's go with, uh, let's see what they were before as I make them up. So um, let's go with uh, negative 2, 3, and 2 minus the square root of 5. Let's, we'll go with that. So, what this does for us is the, the irrational root theorem uh, tells us that if 2 minus root 5 is on the list, then 2 plus root 5 is also on the list. Okay? Um, and so this is going to be at least a degree 4 polynomial. It doesn't mention any multiplicities that I need to deal with here, so uh, we will leave it just like this. Um, the easy things to come up with, if we're going to write this polynomial in factored form, uh, if negative 2, in fact, let's make it uh, negative 2 sevenths, okay? So that means that uh, an x minus negative 2 sevenths or x plus 2 sevenths should be one of the factors. Um, and x minus 3 should be one of the factors. And from this, an x minus 2 minus root 5 should be a factor. And an x minus 2 plus root 5 should also be a factor. Okay, these are my four factors. Now, I'd prefer that I didn't end up with fractions in there. So if I just multiply a 7 through here, 7x plus 2 will also, when I set it equal to 0, give me a negative 2 sevenths as an answer. So I'm going to use that instead so that I don't have fractions. Okay, what I need to do now is, if it wants this in a standard form, i got to multiply all these things together. Okay. There is a strategy that I'm going to use to, to do that. I'm obviously I'm going to use the area models to do the multiplication. And I'm going to multiply uh, the two just regular looking binomials together here first. So I get a 7x squared minus 21x plus 2x and a minus 6. And so that gives me a 7x squared minus 19x minus 6. Okay. Now, I could bring in one of these other ones, but the nature of these kinds of roots is that if I multiply those together, I should end up with things that don't have the square roots in them anymore. Okay? But there really are three pieces going on on each of those, and I'm going to distribute the subtraction sign here. So I'm going to have an x, a minus 2, and a plus square root of 5. And on this side, an x, a minus 2, and a minus square root of 5. Let's multiply these together. I get an x squared. I get a minus 2x. I get a plus x times the square root of 5. I have a minus 2x here. I have a plus 4 there. I have a minus 2 times the square root of 5 there. I have a minus x times the square root of 5 here. A plus 2 times the square root of 5. And a minus the square root of 25 when I multiply those together. Yeah. Well, this minus x root 5 and plus x root 5, those are going to cancel each other out. Those add up to 0. My plus 2 root 5 and my minus 2 root 5 also add up to 0. 
and the square root of 25 is 5, so this thing with the negative in front is actually a negative 5. So I'm going to be able to combine that with this one here. Those are both just constants. So I've got an x squared minus 2x minus 2x is minus 4x, and 4 minus 5 is negative 1. So, when I multiply the two complex roots together, I get x squared minus 4x minus 1. When I multiply the two real rational roots together, I get, those weren't complex roots, sorry, irrational roots. I get 7x squared minus 19x minus 6 when I multiply the uh, rational roots together. And now I need to multiply both of these things together. So, I'll take my 7x squared uh, minus 19x plus 6, and my x squared minus 4x minus 1, and put those together and multiply them. Okay. So that will give me a 7x to the 4th minus 19x cubed minus 6x squared kind of come in full circle on all this now. This looks like what we did in one of the very earliest uh, of these videos. Um, multiplying polynomials together. And so if I combine all of those things, I get a 7x to the fourth. Uh, minus 19 minus 28 is minus uh, 47x cubed. Uh, 76 minus 6 is 70, minus 7 is plus 63x squared. 19x and 24x sounds like 43x plus 6. And this is my polynomial that I was looking for. Okay. This will have the listed roots. If I wanted to graph that, I would expect to see this crossing the x-axis in four places. Okay, Once at 3, that was a nice one. Once at just a little bit to the left of 0. Um, the 2 minus root 5 is pretty close to that because root 5 is just a little bit bigger than 2. So 2 minus a number a little bit bigger than 2 is pretty close. And 2 plus the square root of 5 is something a little bit to the right of 4. Um, I am not going to graph this on here right now, but you can certainly type that in, graph it, and verify what it is that we saw there. So that is how we use the fundamental theorem, the understanding of roots and factors to build a polynomial in standard form that has exactly, will cross the x-axis in exactly the places that we want it to cross. Okay.